Hey, what's up everybody? This is Joshua Casper. I'm back at you with another tutorial. Today we're going to be checking out the Stem Creator. This is by Native Instruments. It's a free plugin or program that you can download right now. And essentially what it allows you to do is take four stems and embed them in an MP4 together with the master file. And then you can use those files with programs that accept stems where people can mix in the drums and the bass and the synths and the vox or effects to, at different levels and do different things. You just have a lot more control rather than just playing the master file, though that is a possibility as well. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to get started. It's a really simple, really straightforward program and uh, I figure we should just jump right in. Now the first thing you're gonna wanna do is upload some cover art and the download of the Stem Creator from the official website and I'll leave a link on my blog, but uh, that comes with Photoshop templates. So what I'm gonna do is just click in here and I'm gonna go find a... Uh, Ta-da, ta-da. Oh wait, we could probably check right here. Properties, details, it's 300 by 300 and it needs to be a PNG file. So I'm gonna just go ahead and pick this, boom, and you can delete or replace it by hovering over the image again. Track name, example, artist, Joshua Casper, and uh, the name of the release, the label, if it's gonna be on a label, the genre of the music, the track number, if it's more than one, you also have more options for the remixer if there's a remixer in the track. I'm guessing if it's a DJ mix or uh, the mix engineer, the producer, the release date, the ISRC code or the catalog number, but you don't need to put anything in here. It's just if you want it, especially if you're gonna be selling them or passing them around the internet, you're gonna want as much information there as possible. And then inside of here, we've got the drums, bass, synths, and vox. It doesn't have to be necessarily these things, but this is a really good idea because you got to think about what you want control over when you're playing a mix when you're DJing. So these are generally the things you want to be able to solo or, you know, mute. So I'm just going to come in and hit the plus button again, come in to this one and just come to where it is. And I'm going to put the drums in there. Now I can rename it if I want to, and I can also change the color though. Native Instruments says that the colors are kind of defined, like reds should always be drums. And it's just easier when you're dealing with color coding stuff because uh, it's just easier to remember all oh, reds, drums. It's just simpler that way, though you don't need to if you don't want to, if you want to be a rebel without a cause, you know what I mean? The other thing to think about when you're uploading these things into the Stems Creator is that they all need to be the same sample rate. So these are all going to be 48K, but if you've got stems at 48k and your master at 44.1 they're not going to export correctly they need to be the same one in fact if you try uh, the program will give you a warning saying it's not possible so just keep that in mind when you're exporting and stuff like that generally speaking in this day and age uh, hard drives are pretty cheap especially non-solid state ones so i like to just keep everything at 24 bit 48k just because if you want to do anything later down the line the bigger the file the better your chances of it, manipulating it to a better degree without causing too many artifacts. It's just something to keep in mind. Um, bass, come in, bass, and then we wanna go to melodics. And you can change it here again. I have it titled melodics, I can change it, but it's pretty much synths. And then I have SFX here, not a vox, because there's no vocals, so I'm just gonna put SFX here on the title. And if we wanted to change the color, just so we can keep the kind of native instruments purple as vocals, we can just do that here by simply changing it. That's not gonna work, right? So there we go. And then the master file is gonna be on my desktop. Uh, boom, and here we go. So now we can go ahead and play the tracks together. So the stem mix is gonna be these four together. And the master will be the master. And the reason why this is good to know and it also stays in the same relative position is because you want the stem mix to sound similar to the master upon output. So flipping back and forth between them should sound as close as you can using just what's inside of the stem creator here. So what you're gonna to wanna to do next is come down to the dynamic section. And I always go to expert, but if you just wanna leave it on uh, the basic, you can as well if things are already pretty close. Mine are already pretty close, but I'll just jump into expert. The compressor is going to be just for the stems together. So if I come up here and play this, 
uh, we can affect the compressor on the stems to get a different effect from how the stems are mixed together. Uh, you have the import, dry, wet, output, and if you click this area, you'll come over to the ratio, high pass, cutoff, attack, and release. I'm actually just gonna turn it off because I think it sounds pretty good and pretty similar. <laughs> And then there's a limiter. And again, this is just for the stems mix output. And you generally want to always leave this on because when you're trying to export stems, and I'm going to do this in a future tutorial, the best way to go about doing this uh, from Ableton Live, but they're going to be jumping over the, Z, the, the zero dB threshold. And you can actually see that here on the output. Uh, if we go ahead and play this stems mix again. So you want to keep that on and just let it do its thing. We're getting only a little bit of gain reduction. And again, when I flip back and forth, they sound really similar. There's no big jump in audio. There is a little bit of a difference, but it's nothing too crazy. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do. And then you just hit export and it's going to export the .stem file, which is essentially an MP4, but it's just really creative. So uh, you just give it a name and hit save and it'll export for you and you're good to go to import that into whatever program you're using that can support stem tracks. Anyway, the program's free. Uh, it seems like it might be the future, especially for, you know, people who are really DJing all the time and really want more control over their sets. This is, you know, definitely the way to go. So it's best to know it now. It's best to get in the door kind of early. It's been out for a while, but I haven't needed it until recently. So I figured I'd share a tutorial with you guys about what it is and how to use it. Anyway, I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.